Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about my new car. So let me introduce you to my 1970 Volkswagen Bug. Bam, there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed that little montage. That's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys like the new car. Just kidding, we're gonna go through a few things on this car, talk about what's wrong with it because right now this car is not running and we'll get into why that is. And I also wanna talk about why I bought the car and sort of my plans of what I'm gonna do with it are. We'll also do a little bit more of a detailed walk around and go through everything on the car. And then I really wanna tell you guys the story of how I got it because even though I've only bought in three vehicles in my life, this transaction is definitely the strangest of the three to say the least. So we'll go through all that. The first thing I wanna start with though is just walking around the car in a little bit more detail because I myself haven't even really gone through the car yet because I've been waiting two days to do it on camera. So I guess we'll start with the interior, just hop in and check things out. The interior is a really nice part of this car besides the dash, which a lot of you probably noticed at the in the little montage. The dash is missing the plastic cover that usually is on these cars. And I'm not gonna be putting that back in just because I don't like how it looks and I don't like the plasticky feel. And I like the metal dash in my 64 bug, so I'm just gonna try and keep it metal in this car too. I know a lot of people end up doing the same thing. The first thing I need to find is the little metal dash covers right here. You can find them online. Uh, I just need to order those. And if there's any issues, I'll just end up making my own. The next thing you'll notice are these little plastic vents in the dash. And these currently look terrible. I think they got snapped off when the dash got removed. I know in Europe in I think 68, 69 and 70, they still did metal dashes, but they had these vents. So you can buy these and get them shipped to your house that are made to have a metal dash with this plastic vent. So I may end up doing that, but first I'm gonna try and just take a Dremel and get these down flat and see if it looks decent. And if it does, I'll just run that. But if not, I'll just have to end up ordering some ones because I do hate how these currently look. Also got some interesting air fresheners in the car. These are definitely getting torn out after this video. I just wanted to leave the car completely how I found it when I recorded this, just so I can look back eventually and have a laugh. But this is what came on the car. Uh, probably swap those out with some black ice and some other stuff just to get the car smelling good. Inside here, uh, just got your normal glove compartment. Got some tools, got a sweet Marvel shifter, dude. Watch out, may have to use that, I don't know. Pretty sweet Spider-Man. This whole glove box is gonna get cleaned out as well. I think I will leave this screwdriver in here just because I like to leave one original piece of the car when I found it in the car. So that car, I also have a screwdriver in as well. So I'm gonna leave that in there and tear everything else out. That's our little glove compartment. The rest of this interior is in really good condition as well. The door panels and the rear panels are pretty much immaculate. There's no tears or anything on either side. So I'm really happy that this car has good door panels. And the guy that I bought the car from was actually swapping everything to red. So I have some spare door panels and the rear cards as well. So all that's brand new if I wanted to install it. But honestly, I like the black and I like the original. So I'm just going to end up keeping that. Backing out of the car a little bit, you can see these seats just got reupholstered. That got done about a week before I got the car. So brand new fronts, brand new rears. And then again, that's why you're swapping the door cards as well, just to match. I do have the passenger seat. It's not in the car right now because it wouldn't fit and the reason for that is when it was getting reupholstered this little lever right here it's essentially just a cam that you twist around and that adjusts where your seat sits when the passenger seat was getting reupholstered it got put on the same side as this one so on the left side and when you try and put the seat in that interferes with your trans tunnel right here so the seat's in the garage right now and i already swapped the adjuster over to the right side i just need to put the seat back in over here you can see the little seat belt clipper and that just needs to get bolted back on via those bolts has the standard seat belts right there bolted up and then we also got this little cover in the back that's pretty clean i'm probably going to leave that in there for now but eventually that will get removed but really clean interior on this car i'm super happy about it for some reason i always get the cars with good interiors this car and the 64 both have really nice interiors so i'm pumped for that although the paint does look really good on this car it's not as good as you might think. 
There doesn't seem to be clear coat on here and there's quite a bit of orange peel. It almost looked like it was rolled on or something like that, but it does look good from afar. Just if you come up close, you'll notice the imperfections in it. One thing that I learned on my last car too is to check for these weather seals to see if you're gonna have to replace them. On this car, they're almost all perfect. The rubber's in really good condition. It looks like these were replaced somewhat recently. The only problem is these ones on the window, which I can replace that. The wing windows, those in really good condition. Front window, really nice condition as well. So I'm pretty happy that I just have to replace these ones and none of the other ones because on that car, the quarter window ones were not that difficult, but these ones were kind of a pain to do, especially to get the old ones out because they're really rock hard and hard to get out. So I'm glad I don't have to deal with any of that on this car, it's already all done. You've probably noticed that this car is pretty rust free. Even the belly pin on it is really clean. There's not really any rust down there. And the only spot that I did find is right here. That's the only bad spot and it's under the paint. When I decide to paint this car, which I am planning on doing eventually, I'll just go through and get rid of that rust so I don't have to worry about it. We'll go through, check out the little front compartment. So we'll open that up, pop this lever all the way down. That seems to be how you release the hood on these cars. And we'll go through, open that up. So this guy opens up. This isn't bent at all in really good condition. Uh, just have your typical stuff in here. You got the spare and then just your normal rat's nest that comes with these cars. He also left me with a little jack and I'm not sure what this is. Pacific Bell, I don't know. Oh, is this like a windshield cover, I guess? Okay, um, here, those look like brake, those brake pads? Yeah, it is. So we got some spare brake pads as well and just a box. You didn't even leave me with the tire inflator, dude. They just got the box, what's that all about? So now we'll move on to the motor of the car and why it's not running. I'll give you quite a big hint. Um, what's going on right there? Oh, I don't know. Let's open this up. Oh, geez, what the heck happened in here? So yes, this motor did catch on fire happened in your typical spot with the fuel filter. I learned on that car not to put it back there. After I did the will it run for it, everybody says relocate that fuel filter. So on that car, I now have it underneath and nowhere in the engine bay. That's what's gonna happen once I redo all this is I'm gonna put the filter down below and then just have this as a line going straight to the carburetor and obviously have hose clamps. That's part of the reason that this popped off is because of no hose clamps. So this is typically how these cars catch on fire is either the fuel filter or the little stub on the carburetor pops out and you get fuel leaking. It always ends up on the distributor because you have spark in there, it'll just ignite the fuel. So after looking this over, it's not gonna take a huge amount of work to get this thing running again. I already ordered all the parts and they're on the way. One thing you'll also notice is this is a dual port motor. These 70 cars were supposed to come with a 1600 single port and 71 and later they came with the dual ports which made a little bit more power. So this motor got swapped into this car at some point, not sure when and I'm not sure how many miles this car had. Luckily I was able to drive it before it caught fire so I know that this is a good running motor and I'm not worried about having any problems once I replace all these accessories. But I am very happy that I already got upgraded to the dual port over the single port because I was planning on doing that at some point anyways. So that's the motor on this car. I will be doing a will it run video once I get all the parts in and get it all on. So look forward to that. That'll probably be out next week. But yeah, I've got some work ahead of us for there. And you'll also notice, got the black and yellow plates. These unfortunately are not gonna be on the car. In California, if you wanna transfer these black and yellow plates, even though it's not customized with special lettering, you do have to fill out a form and the seller of the car has to fill out a form. And I just, didn't want to go through that and have to go get a signature again so i have standard plates for now and i'm going to be getting my own custom plates in the next few months once they finally show up so i'll have my own black and yellows in a few months but for now we're just gonna to have to stick with some stock plates on this thing so now i want to talk about how i ended up getting this car i'd been on the search for one for a 69 or a 70 bug for about three months so i was looking on offer up about every hour i was looking on facebook marketplace craigslist and i was posting on my instagram just to see if anybody had one for sale so i was looking every hour or so on offer up and i just couldn't find anything or everything was just overpriced so what i ended up doing is i went back and looked at ads that were listed months and months and months prior and just nobody had gone and bought the car yet this car was listed for about six months i think it was and i messaged him he still had the car he was just getting the interior redone at that point and then he was gonna repost it for sale. 
he was gonna repost it for like $4,500 or something. So I was like, I didn't even respond to him. I was like, I don't wanna deal with that. That's out of my price range. But I did give him my number just to send me photos of, which he never did. So that was that. I just basically forgot about that car. So that was about three to four months ago that I was talking to him about the car. And then about five weeks ago, I just got some pictures of a bug sent to my phone out of the blue. And I didn't even remember what car it was. I was like, okay, I must have asked this dude for pictures a while ago. Cause I'd been heading up a lot of people about cars. So I totally forgot this one even existed, but he ended up sending me photos, said the interior was getting done soon. And that was about five weeks ago. So I was just waiting for the interior to get done. And so I scheduled a time to go look at the car. That was about three weeks ago. Went and looked at the car, drove it. This car drives really smoothly. Doesn't grind into any gears or anything. Brakes work good. So I drove the car and wanted to take it basically right then. The only reason I didn't at that time is because the passenger seat, like I talked about with that little air with the adjuster, he was gonna take it to the upholstery guy and get it fixed. And that was gonna happen the next day. And then I would come back the following Tuesday and pick up the car. So this is where things start to get a little bit weird. On that Monday, I was texting him just to see how the upholstery was going, see if he got that seat fixed. And he wasn't really texting me back and kind of ignoring my text. So I was a little bit confused and I was concerned that he might be selling the car to somebody else. So I was a little anxious just trying to get this car and he wasn't responding. So I was freaking out a little bit. I finally got a hold of him. I think it was the next day on Tuesday when I was supposed to come look at the car. And he said the car wasn't starting for some reason. So I was like, okay, I'll bring some tools and I'll try and get the car started. So me and my buddy somehow got down there. He finally sent us the address and we went down and the car was parked just on a random street because it, I thought it was at his house and it just wasn't starting, but apparently it broke down. So he wasn't even there yet. And we pulled up to the car and right as we got out, I was like, why does this thing look so dirty? Because when I drove the car two days earlier, it was super clean. And now there looked like there was some dirt on the back. And I was like, uh, that's a little bit weird and my buddy was like oh maybe they were working on it with greasy hands or something trying to get it to start so i was like okay maybe i was like i was like maybe this thing caught on fire just because i saw the little black marks on the back of the hood and so we didn't really know what was happening so we walked up a little bit closer my buddy was like what's that underneath the car and there's a puddle of fluid which i think is gas i'm not really sure what it was and i was like what the heck so i popped the deck lid and i saw just everything melted and it had caught on fire and as you see there's a bunch of dirt in the back of the thing that i have to clean out still so somebody that was driving it definitely knew the car caught on fire and put the fire out at this point i was really unhappy because the dude wasn't honest with me he just said oh it wasn't starting and so I just wasted my time and my buddy's time to go down there and just see this thing burnt up. So we left right then and there before the guy even showed up and basically forgot about it. So fast forward to last Friday, I thought I'd text the guy just to see how much he'd actually want for the car in its current state. And he threw me back a number that was somewhere where I was thinking. So my dad and I took our trailer down there with the winch on it all the way down to Chula Vista and caught this thing on Monday. I'm really happy that the deal finally went through because just from me texting him originally with the photos and everything, that was five weeks ago. And I finally got the car five weeks later. So that's sort of the story of how I got this car. Definitely took the longest out of any car to close the deal on, five weeks in total. But we finally have it here. We can finally go have fun with it. Now that we have the car side by side, I want to talk about why I felt the need to buy another car. And the reason for that, which I'll spill the beans for right now, because that's kind of a critical part to why I bought this thing, is I do eventually want to build this car and race it in class 11. I'm not sure when that build's going to be happening. Probably next summer, just because I need to stack all the parts first. And that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm not just going to tear this thing apart and start building it. I'm going to get pretty much all the parts I need first. That way I'm not waiting on anything, waiting to buy anything. I have it all right in front of me to build the car. The one thing I may do is what I already did to that car, just build the beam first and then do a torsion lift on the back just so I can throw on some bigger tires and drive it like that. Or I may just decide to leave it stock just because it's simple and I can go drive the car. So that is the reason why I bought this car. And we'll discuss the differences between the two that makes this one a better candidate for class 11. The first thing, obvious difference between the two is just the condition of the body. So this car does have some significant rust. Yes, it could be fixed, but it could be a little bit easier to start with a car that doesn't have any rust. This is the worst spot right here. It actually has a little hole through it. It's not terrible on this car, but it is a little bit bad. That wasn't the only reason why I switched to another car though. One of the other big differences are right here. 
So you can see this car has camber on it when you lift it. And the reason for that is because it has a swing axle rear end. Whereas this car, since it's a 70, has an IRS rear end. So when you lift the rear end of this car, it's not gonna have that crazy camber change like a swing axle rear end. The change from swing axle to independent rear suspension happened first in 69. So for a standard Beetle with a independent rear suspension, you're only gonna find that in the years 69 and 70, which is what I had been looking for for a bug. So that's probably the biggest difference between the two. The other differences is obviously motor size. So this car, since it is a 64, has your standard 40 horsepower, 1200 cc motor. So I would have to upgrade this anyways to the 1600, which isn't a big deal. You can find these motors, or sorry, the 1600 motors for about $1,000 used and it might need a rebuild. So that could have been done at a pretty low cost. And the other main thing is this car would have to get swapped to 12 volt. It wouldn't have to, but to use a 1600 and try and keep six volt on everything to power your big lights that you're gonna be throwing on a class 11, you're gonna have to swap the thing over to 12 volt. These cars already are 12 volt because Volkswagen switched to 12 volt in 67, 1967. So that's another reason why that car is a little bit better of a candidate. The price alone, just to swap the motor on this car and to get it over to a 12 volt system would have cost the same amount as that whole car did. So it just makes a little bit more sense to start with a car with those options already on it. Well, there you have it. That's my new car. And that's the reason why I got it and the weird story how I got it. What you can expect next for this thing is a will it run video, which should be coming out next week. Like I said earlier, all the parts are on the way. I just have to get them installed and see if this thing will fire right back up. That's going to do it for this video though. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.